and I mean, I was crying one of those awful cries, right? Because I didn't even understand what had just happened to me. Um, I, I truly didn't realize that the Lord had changed my heart the way that he did. And I can remember the people sitting beside me came up and said, are you okay? <laughs> I can remember just being that broken, right, that the Lord just just really, really grabbed a hold of me. And, man, I'm praying that today, right, that you would be desperate for him above all else, right, above all else, right, that you would be desperate for him. Yeah, it's done wrecked me already. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4 is where we're going to be parked at. Go ahead and begin turning your Bibles, right? Um, I can't get sidetracked here this morning. Um, I really want to spend some time in this. wasn't uh, wasn't really my plan, but after last week, I graciously want to want to definitely thank you all for allowing me to go out and do some ministry outside these walls. I had a great time uh, last weekend being able to uh, minister there at uh, Crown Recovery Center at the Ark. Uh, was blessed by being able to to be a part of that for a couple of days, and the Lord just really doing a great and mighty work. Uh, the thirty men's lives. I truly believe were changed as well as uh, all of us that went in uh, definitely 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 changed so a lot of this this morning right kind of birthed out of that time there um, a passage that I know that we've that we've looked at before in the past uh, but man it brought a new fresh uh, just uh, spark into my into my heart uh, this this last week and then being able to see it trickle over right how, how many of us realize that 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 when God touches just one part of our life it it, it trickles over right it doesn't just just happen in that one moment and then it stops right God ministers and it continues to carry on as long as we continue to feed that spirit that's on the inside of us and that's what I'm praying right that uh, this morning that you would truly grasp this in, in such a great way because I know that there are people that are suffering right I know that there are people who are going through a lot of stuff that maybe most of us don't know uh, if we do know about it we don't have a clue and understand it right your pain and my pain is different right your suffering and my suffering is different what you're dealing with I may deal with it in a total different way and guess what it's okay <laughs> it's okay we've we've got to we've got to get past the point of thinking that the way that I handle it is the way that you should handle it come on now listen to me this morning right I, I really need because if you just want me to lie to you this morning Let's just shut it down right now. I really, I really want to be truthful and honest, right, in the way that I share my heart with you because God is, God is really wanting to, to, to use you all, every single one of you, not just, not just part of you. And I don't care if today's the first day that you've walked through these doors. I believe that God ordained you to be here for this moment and that he's wanting to change so much in your life, right? Not just that one that may be here for the first time, but if you are a lifetime attender, hello, God's got you here today, right? Or if this is your normal place of worship, God truly has you here for a purpose and for his reason, right? So I am excited about that this morning, and I want to jump right in and be a good steward of our time. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to read verses 7 through 18, and if you're physically able and can stand as we read God's Word, that would be great. I encourage you, if you don't have a Bible right, there's one right in front of you. Uh, please use that. If you don't personally own your own copy of God's Word, then see me before you leave, right? And we'll make sure that you get one. Uh, starting in verse 7, it says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. 
Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe, so we also speak. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are transit, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Lord, we come to you, and we're, we're truly graceful, grateful for this word this morning, Lord, knowing that there's so much so much to unpack here, Lord, and I'm just praying, praying that your spirit would take these words this morning, Lord, that it would just deposit them in the hearts of all, all that's here, Lord, all of those that may be watching now or later on, Lord, that you would speak directly to their hearts. You, you, you allow them to get exactly of not only what, what, what you want, Lord, but what they need this morning. Let us truly walk away from this place changed by, by your spirit, Lord, and I'm just praying praying and knowing and believing that that can only take place by you, Lord. So just have your will, your way right now. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Today might not have been a good day to leave my handkerchief at home. Looking here at this passage, right, uh, I know that uh, two weeks back, I know last week uh, you all were blessed to hear from Gideon speaking, right, and I'm truly, truly blessed by the words that he shared. I know uh, uh, two weeks ago, right, as we shared in 2 Corinthians, finishing up there, uh, man, I, I love what the, uh, what the Apostle Paul is sharing here with his church that he cares so much about, right, with so many different things that are going on. But he, he's talking in such a way this morning, right, that I, I hope... I hope grabs a hold of you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, brother. I might need that. I might need that. He's using some great, great imagery, right? And some that I know that that maybe doesn't quite relate to us in this present time or present day, right? As we think about these jars of clay, right? These treasures in earthly vessels, right? There were clay pots was what the predominant, uh, you know, uh, uh, things that they had back in those days, right? There was no fine china, right? There was not the the dishes and the cups that we're, we're accustomed to in our day, right? There were these clay pots, and they were cheap, right? They were breakable. They were uh, almost replaceable, but guess what? They were used all over their house, right? They were, they were used in many different ways, and they had all kinds of diff different, different functions, but mostly they used them all to hold garbage, Oh my gracious, right? We we see that this 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 function, right, that, that was the most common was to use it to hold some sort of garbage or even human waste. Now I know, right, I know even as I, I'm saying these, right, but we we have to see why the Apostle Paul is is bringing this type of imagery in, right? He he really wanted you to understand exactly of what he's talking about, the Holy Spirit, God himself this treasure living inside of something frail and expendable you and I right the Holy Spirit living on the in, on the inside of us right God making it just completely clear that this salvation thing that only he can provide right and it's the result of his work and his power right not that anyone else could generate not any words that could be spoken in order to make that happen right which I truly believe brings us to the this great thing that he's trying to just convey with this clay pot, right? Our weaknesses, <laughs> our bodies, what we're walking around with right there, they they are just that. But it's not all that we are. 
We, we need to see this metaphor that Paul is using with this clay pot, right, to show that we're just this, this, this vessel that's housing something so wonderful, right, especially as he's experiencing a lot of heartache, not only internally but externally, right? But God is the one that is strengthening him, right? Listen to some of this wording this morning that I hope maybe resonates in some of your lives, right? Afflicted in every way, inside and out, right? Afflicted. Just, just think about that word. Just think about what that means. And I, and I know that's different for every single one of you. Right? Not, not just in some way, right? Afflicted inside and out, every way, but not crushed. Right? Some translations say, but not, not yet not straightened out. Just think about exactly of how, how burdensome that almost even seems, right? Perplexed. Just look at that word. To be at a loss, right? To be thinking that there's no way out, Right? It's one of the most overwhelming things that, that I see as I do some of this ministry with people who are struggling with forms of addiction, right, or those that seem to cannot get away, people praying over and over and over, Lord, change me, really wanting to, to rid themselves. And maybe that's some of what you feel or what you experience that day in and day out. You keep doing the things that maybe you don't really want to do. And you keep saying, God, please help me. Change me, right? I don't want to, I don't want to do this. And yet you feel yourself just going back to it again and again, right? Just perplexed, right? To think that, oh my gracious, no matter what I do, I cannot get out of it. Right? But yet not into despair, right? Not driven to despair. Persecuted. Someone trying to harm someone else, right? Yet not forsaken, right? Or not, but not forsaken, struck down, but yet, guess what? Not destroyed. Paul was stoned right here in, in Lystra, right? But yet he was not killed. He was not destroyed. Paul is writing from a perspective that he is suffering all the time. And he's not suffering because he's this terrible guy any longer, right? He's suffering for the name of Christ, right? He's suffering because he, he once hated this man named Jesus, but now Jesus had changed his life and he wanted to represent him and he wanted other people to know who he was. Paul was experiencing all kinds of heartaches and suffering, but guess what? He was willing to push all of his troubles, all of his terrible things to the side. He knew that, that even though he was experiencing all of this and it made him look extremely weak, it was actually showing the power of God living on the inside of him. The power of God working in and through him. Paul was experiencing death day in and day out, and yet he was willing to continue to pay the price, right? Even if it meant him losing his own life, he was willing to continue to share the gospel. He preached on, right? He continued on. Every time you see Paul either uh, persecuted in some way, as soon as he would finish up, right, he was on to the next place. He couldn't stay quiet about what God had done for him. He was willing to risk his life for the salvation of those whom he preached to. I heard a preacher say one time, I'm a dying man preaching to dying men. Just, just think about how, how those words, right, how that they should be almost piercing our hearts as we hear them, right? Death is at work in us, but life in you, right? Paul was willing to risk his life to bring the gospel to Corinth, to this church. If not, these people would not have received salvation, maybe. Paul had this great belief, right? He wasn't some super Christian, right, that none of us could ever attain. 
It's the same saving grace, the same saving knowledge that Paul experienced that we can experience, right? This is what's compelling him to go on. It's not that he got some special dose of the Holy Spirit that we can't get. What Paul received is what you and I received, the same Spirit of God. And I want to know, do you believe it enough today to tell others about Jesus? Paul, he knew the gospel, right? He, he knew what, what, what all of it meant, but he truly focused on God and that resurrection power because that's what separates every bit of it, right? If Christ did not rise from the grave, then it's foolishness to those who are perishing. This is what allowed him to face these difficult times. This is what allowed him to go into places of complete danger. This is what allowed him to face the mobs and the crowds and even to be arrested. Paul constantly rested in what he knew about God, not in how he felt. You see, we're living in this how I feel movement now. Come on. Let's, just, let's be real this morning, right? We're, we're living in this uh, kind of emotion overload society, right? And if you offend me or hurt my feelings in any way, I'm done with you. It is crazy, right? It is, it is, a, it is a crazy culture that we're living in. And it's spilled over into every aspect of our lives, right? It's spilled over into the workforce, right? It's spilled over even into the church. But can, can you imagine Paul going to church in 2022 and him preaching the message he preached right now and someone getting mad, getting their feelings hurt? And this dude stand up and saying, do you know that I just had to escape by way of a basket over a wall after I had just got stoned almost to death? And you're crying about your feelings? Now, please, right, I'm not minimizing anyone's feelings here this morning, right? Our feelings are important, and I, I, I understand that, right? But I, I really need you to understand that you can't, I can't base my worship on God on how I feel. Because guess what? You'll never feel like worshiping, right? Because you're, you're waiting on that mountaintop experience for you to start saying, oh, yes, praise the Lord, right? You're waiting on that perfect song, right, which is never going to be sung, right? You're waiting on that top of the morning type blessing that, that you hope that you receive before you say, God, you're good. But what if that never comes? <laughs> what if God's got you in the valley for a reason? What if God's allowing you to experience what you are experiencing so that you'll praise him right where you're at? We, we need to hear these truths this morning, right? I, I, I know it's very easy for us to think that God is always this one way, and if he's not this one way, then maybe I don't want any part with him. We need not to focus our attention on how that we feel. Instead, we need to focus our attention on God. Hear this out this morning, right? Someone here today, right? Somebody here, right? Some of you are here for this very reason this morning. I, I truly believe it. I truly believe that, that, that you can't get past how that you feel about something or maybe how you feel about someone else, right? But you're not taking into consideration what you know about God. That he's good, that he's faithful, that he's always going to be, that he's never going to leave you or forsake you, that he's coming back for you because you're too focused on you. You're not, you're not focused upon God and why that he's got you exactly of where you're at. All the suffering that Paul endured, right, it brought good to other people. Newsflash, is your suffering bringing people to God? Or is it just bringing them to the pity party? Now listen, right, even as I, even as I say that, I, I experience it. I have feelings, believe it or not, right? And mine get hurt, and I understand that it's so easy to get caught up in how that we feel. But our, our what is what we're going through, is it bringing other people to God? Right now, can you say that your life has brought or is bringing glory to God? Right now, can you say that? 
your life that you're living, right? Not, not someone else, right? Not the person beside you or in front of you or behind you, right? Your life. Is it bringing or has it brought glory to God in some way? Hey, don't, don't take it through a lifetime. Just take it back this last week. Which I truly believe it brings us right to the, to the heart of this message, right? Where we should begin to shift our focus, right? Do not lose heart. It's words that we've been talking about for this whole entire year, right? Yes, we're getting older. Believe it or not, the youngest of the young, you are getting older every single day. And for those of you who feel old, guess what? I realize that you're not able to do what you once could do. Maybe some of us have just came to that realization this week. <laughs> right? Maybe there's something that just happened in your life and you said, oh man, I'd give anything to be able to do that again. Your outer self is wasting away. Do you, do you understand that? You're on borrowed time. The clock is ticking, right? You're not getting any younger. I know that's a hard real, realization, right? But it is destined for you to die. Oh, man. No, even as I, I say those, own, those words, right, it, it rings out in my own head, right, as I look back how quickly my short life has already been. And Paul is saying that same thing here, right? His lifestyle, the way that he's living, the way that he's sharing the gospel, it's actually speeding up his process. Do you understand that just because he's a faithful servant of God that his lifespan is decreasing? It's not, it's not increasing this side of eternity, right? Paul was not some old man that had just lived out his best days, right? He'd went through life and gained more, 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 and it was the end of the road for him. No, Paul was a young man, but he was wearing himself out in ministry day in and day out. But guess what? The effort, the pace, he maintained it. He didn't back up. He continued to press on because he knew that the inner man living on the inside of him was being renewed day by day. Do you understand? Paul wasn't feeding this, right? He wasn't going to the gym and getting on the treadmill and eating salads and the right amount of meat every day. Come on, I'm just picking. Nothing wrong with those things, right? Healthy lifestyle is good. God calls us to take care of this temple. But he wasn't focused completely upon that, right? Paul was worried more about what was on the inside of him, right? He knew the outside was dying. He was worried about taking care of the inside. He knew that his flesh was going to decay and rot and ruin. It was going to go back to where it came from. But his spirit what was what he wanted to take care of. How about you? The longer that you're alive, are you becoming more Christ-like? I know that's a loaded question, right? Can you tell every day that you're dying to self more and more? And I know, I know that's a loaded question. But here's a newsflash. You ought to be able to see that. Every day you ought to see less of you. Every day I ought to see less of me, right? It, uh, I ought not be able to look in that mirror and see Kyle, right? Every day it ought to be just dwindling away. And every time that I look into that mirror, I ought to see more of Christ. I ought to see more of Christ, and you ought to see more of Christ every time that you look at your reflection. Can someone tell that? Can someone truly see more of Christ in you? Is the Spirit of God growing more on the inside of you? Is it known? I tell you, I'm glad that we've, we've got to this part, right? Because it's just the introduction. Praise the Lord. Let's go. Let's get, let's get down to the most important question, right? I, I really love it because I experienced this, this affliction last weekend with so many of these men, right? And for some of them, it's so very hard to believe that this is light momentary affliction because most had been through at least 10 plus rehab facilities. Most had OD'd and been brought back to life at least three times. Most had prayed a prayer. Most had cried out to God over and over and over, change me, take this from me. I don't want to do this anymore. 
What's so light about that? What's so light about that affliction that, that, that Paul is saying, hey, right, this light momentary affliction, right? Weightless is what Paul's saying. He's saying, hey, I really don't even know it, right? I, I don't even realize that I'm experiencing, but how much turmoil, trouble, pain, and affliction do you go through that you say, I didn't even know I was going through it? Now we bring attention to it. Come on. Right? We, we make sure that it's noted. Right? We, 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 we not only sense it, right, but we heighten the not only those that are closest to us, but we want to share it. We want to post it, tweet it, snap it, right? We want to do all those things. Everybody's got to know that I've got a bad day. Paul's saying, hey, I, I'm almost being killed every day, and I don't even recognize it. But he's been under some intense pressure, right? Paul knows what he's talking about. 2 Corinthians, uh, on in chapter 11, he says, Are the servants of Christ, am I better, a better one? Am I talking like a madman with the far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death? Five times I received at the hand of the Jews the forty lashes, less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys and dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false prophets, and toil and hardship through many a sleepless night in hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. And apart from all other things, there is this daily pressure of me, of my anxiety for all the churches. Paul says, not only am I, have I been through all this, I'm still truly concerned for all these places and all these people that I've invested my life in. Paul knew all too well, right? He knew what affliction was about. And there's some of you today that probably can testify that you are well acquainted with affliction. And I would say, right, that I, I would probably even agree that there's nothing light about it. I've not experienced anything like what the Apostle Paul has experienced, and I haven't experienced what maybe many of you have experienced in here. To me, it seems overwhelming. But you see, Paul knew that what he was going through, it was only going to last this brief moment. It was only going to last just for this, just for a few seconds, right? But the future glory that he was going to experience with the Lord, it outweighed anything that he was experiencing now, right? It was, it was better than anything that, that, that he could ever think about, right? It was going to be this eternal glory. So right now, I know that there are people here that are afflicted with great suffering. Right? And whether that's cancer or whether that's disease or whether that's financial hardships or maybe drug addiction, right? Or maybe there's some other type of addiction, right? Or maybe there's just sin that's inside of your life. Maybe it's disobedience to God. And I don't want to minimize that today, right? I, I want to bring it to the light. I want you to hear the words that were spoken so long ago. Let them ring out today. Do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. Do not give up. Stay focused on Christ. Continue to run the race that he set before you. Do not lose hope. Do not give up. Fight the good fight. Do exactly of what Paul did. Look, keep your eyes focused completely upon Christ. Make this your goal. Focus on him and his good, good things, right? Focus on those things that are not seen, right? Get your mind and your attention on that. You focus on that which is seen, you will constantly be distracted. You'll constantly be looking at yourself. But if you focused on Christ, you will begin to see things so much differently you'll begin to see these temporary problems that you're going through that there's going to be glorious rewards waiting for the hall of eternity Paul says that he says that because he knew what God's word said. Paul's not making something new up in this moment right he's, he's speaking about the goodness of God 
Right now, I don't know what's going on in your life. For some of you younger ones here, right, what you're experiencing right now seems pretty horrific. And us as adults, we would maybe even minimize that and say, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be all right. Don't, don't worry about that. Don't, don't focus on that, right? There's this coming, and it's just right now. And I want you to hear me, young people, right? What you're experiencing right now, we want to we wanna take mind to it. What you're experiencing right now, I want you to know that more importantly that God, God knows it and that he loves you and that he wants to help you get through it regardless of how much we as adults or parents sometimes minimize that because we're on the other side of it. Listen, right, whatever pain, whatever suffering, whatever heartache, whatever illness, right, whatever persecution, whatever pain, whatever you're going through here today, realize that, that this life is not all that there is. That it's just a moment, right? That there's so much more than just spending 70 or 80 or 90 or however long the Lord lets you live here, right? That there's life after death, and it's going to be in one of two ways, right? One in glory with God or one in suffering and eternal damnation with the enemy. We're all going to live forever. Do you hear that right? It's, it's not, just, not just the good ones that are going to get to live forever. We're all going to live forever. Just some are going to live with God and others are not. And according to the Scripture, more not than, than are. The greater day, this moment that you're going on, right, this, this light momentary affliction, right, there's something beyond all comparison that is waiting for you. A day that you'll be able to live without sin and without suffering. And guess what? It will help you. You'll no longer live in pain or anything that, that will distract you. You'll no longer be tempted, right, because you'll be living. Living in a place free of all of that. And you'll be able to live with God. I don't know how that makes you feel, right? I don't know where, where that puts you at in your life, right? Because for, for some, that's really hard to comprehend. And I, I know I truly don't grasp all that that means. For some of us, right, maybe we, we almost even take that for granted, because there's tons of people that have not came to this realization, right? I'm, I'm not talking about Christianity by name. I'm not talking about Christianity by way of membership or by way of baptism, right? I'm talking about being just like Christ, followers of Christ. And this morning, if you're here, right, and once again, that doesn't matter. If you're a long-time attender or first time through the doors, none of that's important, right? Because I truly believe that God has brought you here today to be ministered to, for you to truly get what he has for you so that as you walk out these doors, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. Right, And I, I, I know that there is some real baggage here this morning, right? And I know that there is some real suffering and some real pain here and people experiencing things. And here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that God's wanting to, to help you with every bit of that. Today is a day that he's wanting you to offload every bit of that. That today's the day that he's coming and saying, he's wanting you to come and say, Lord, I can no longer carry this burden. I can no longer do this on my own. I can no longer fight this battle right. I'm tired. I'm worn out. Please help me. And guess what? Not only will God help you, but I hope you're looking at a whole entire church that's going to come right alongside you. I hope you're looking at a body of believers that would say, yes, I will, I will lay down my life to pick yours up. That whatever you're going through, whatever struggle, whatever heartache, whatever sickness, whatever financial trouble, whatever addiction, that we would come alongside you and say, we hate it as much as you hate it, but we love you as much as God loves you. See, we got to get over that junk. We've got to get over of what it looks like to someone else. If we want to minister to them people, then guess what? We've got to get right down in the muck, in the mire with them. Because guess what? Jesus did. 
That's exactly what he did. He loved people exactly where they're at, and he called them out of it to follow him. And that's what I'm calling you to do. It's what he's calling me to do this morning. So without delay, right now, God, we're just entrusting you with the remainder of this time. We're entrusting you with what you want to do, Lord. And I truly believe that there are people here this morning that are just packing around not only burdens and heartaches and suffering, Lord, but I truly believe that they're packing around their sin and their self, that, Lord, they're, they're, they're far from you. That, Lord, they've never came to that realization that they are desperate for something in their life and they have just fit all of these other things of the world in there and every time it's just not fitting. And, but, but a little corner's got in there and it's just pacified for the time. But Lord, right now you're, you're saying that, that you are, are wanting to reveal yourself completely and totally to them in this moment. That right now, God, you would show up supernaturally in the lives of the people who need it here the most, Lord. Maybe the people who think that they don't need it the most, Lord. That today that you would just shower them with your grace, your love, and your mercy. That they would experience it afresh and anew. That today, Lord, that they wouldn't worry about who's beside or in front or behind them or that they wouldn't care about what others may think or what others may say, but today they would care more about you, that they would be willing to follow you the remainder of their days, and that we who have trusted in Christ, we would come along and say, we're with you, brother, we're with you, sister, regardless of what you look like, regardless of what you smell like, regardless of what you've acted like, regardless of where you're at, we're with you. And we want to help you get to Christ, that we care more about your eternal salvation than we do about our reputation or our own sake. And Lord, I'm just praying, I'm praying right now that today would be a day that would catapult Bethlehem into a new, full-fledged, full just ongoing of just chasing people out into the highways and the byways that we would no longer just be comfortable with those that come through our doors. That, Lord, we would truly care about people that are dying and going to hell all around us. Lord, break our hearts for what breaks yours, and that's people. Not for programs or for buildings or for stuff, Lord. That you would truly break our hearts for people. I'm just praying right now, God, that you would, you would do a super, supernatural work that only you can do here today. And I, I just want to give that to you. And if it's you need to respond today, however that looks, regardless of where you're at or how old or how big or how small, none of that matters here in this moment, that you would be obedient to God. And if you can't come forward, right, that you would slip up a hand or you would grab a hold of someone beside you, right, that you would allow someone to just take time to just minister to you exactly exactly of where you're at. And I'm just praying, God, have your will, your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, just please respond as the Lord sees fit.